Alright, so today I want to talk about the difference between gas guns and bolt action precision rifles. Um, why you may pick one over the other depending on what your needs or wants are for a precision rifle. Um, there are many advantages and disadvantages to each platform and that's what we're going to discuss today and maybe help if somebody's on the fence about uh, how to get into the precision rifle game. Um, how it may be the easiest way for them to do that or suit their needs the best. So, gas guns and precision rifles, there, there's a lot of things that are similar and a lot of things that are not alike at all. Um, when you go to gas guns, you have a lot more modularity in a gas gun than you do in a bolt action rifle. Now, what do I mean by modularity? Um, this AR-15 lower that I've got here has had many 223 uppers on it over time, but I was able to take that 223 upper off, buy a 224 Valkyrie upper, slap it on here, and I'm off to the races with a precision gas gun without having to spend anywhere near the amount of money that it takes to put together, especially a custom precision rifle. Um, I'm off to the races ready to go with a platform that I can shoot out two distances much further than just the 223 platform. And the 224 Valkyrie is not the only caliber that uh, you can slap an upper on and go. You know, you've got the 224 Grendel, you've got the 65 Grendel, um, the 68 SPC for what it's worth, kind of, um, and a number of other 6mm AR, a number of other different calibers that have been made to fit into a regular AR-15 platform that can get you out to distance. As anybody's, many of you guys have seen the video, I took this 224 Valkyrie out to a mile, and this is a very budget-minded 224 Valkyrie setup. So you've got a lot of modularity, and if you're already, if you already own an AR-15, it's going to be a lot less cost to entry to just buy an upper of some sort. It doesn't even have to be a budget upper, but it's still going to be a lot less cost to entry to get into a precision rifle with a gas gun if you already own an AR than it is with a bolt action. Now, where you come into some disadvantages with that is the bolt action, first off, is accuracy. You're not going to get, now you can get, you can get your gas gun to shoot accurately but it will never shoot to the same accuracy potential as a bolt action precision rifle. Now there's going to be people on here that tell me, oh my, my gas gun shoots as good as any bolt gun and maybe with the load that you have worked up for it, you can get that, you can get a particular load to perform within standards of a good custom built precision rifle, precision bolt action, but you'll never get that thing to be able to be as versatile with different loads and get that get a precision gas gun to be to shoot accurately with across many different types of bullet many different bullets many different loads as you will in a bolt action a bolt action you can load up many different loads a lot of times they will shoot to the different grain weights different loads different powders and a lot of times they will shoot to the same point of aim um, with nearly the same accuracy because it's a much more rigid system especially with a big Good heavy shot. barrel like this um, you don't have a whole lot of as nowhere near as much barrel harmonics this is a heavy 224 Valkyrie barrel and it is still nowhere near as heavy as even this which is a heavy Palma barrel which is not even close to as heavy of a barrel as some of the other barrels that you can put on a precision bolt action. So you, you're losing accuracy. Um, another thing is velocity. With a precision gas gun it, you have to, you're using some of the gas that's created by your cartridge when it fires, you're using that gas to run, run the system, run the gas system. Um, some of it's going to bleed off. So you're losing gas in a few different places, which in turn is going to take away from your overall velocity. Um, with a bolt action, everything's sealed up. You put a, you put a round in the chamber, 
it's all sealed up and that gas only has one way to go and that is straight pushing that that round out the barrel so with a precision bolt action typically depending on what load what rifle you're gonna you're looking at getting 75 feet to 50 to 75 feet per second more out of the same round shot from a bolt action than you would a gas gun so and when it comes to shooting long range velocity is a big part of that if you can't if you don't have your bullet going down range fast enough it can't get out to as far of distance accurately as something that's moving much faster especially you know 50 to 75 feet per second faster is a significant amount along with the losing velocity from the gas typically in a precision gas gun you're not going to have as long of a barrel as you are on a precision especially a custom built precision rifle um, this is a 24 inch uh, barrel on this 224 Valkyrie and that's about as long as you're really gonna see on any uh, precision gas gun so the barrel length adds to velocity um, typically there's some cases where that's not the that's not exactly the case but in 99% of the precision rifle cartridges out there the longer the barrel to a certain point much longer than 24 inches is going to add to your velocity so this is a 28 inch barrel and I could go longer with that if I wanted to but 24 is about as long as you're really gonna go or most people will go with a gas gun precision rifle build so you're losing velocity over the gas gun so there's that to think about too when it comes to the precision gas gun also you're not going to have anywhere near the reliability obviously as you are from a bolt action rifle a bolt action rifle is much more is a much more simple mechanism than a gas operated semi-automatic rifle um, you know you have a lot more going on with this which takes the gas coming up a tube blowing back your bolt carrier sending it forward chambering a new round and cocking the firing pin being ready to or cocking the hammer and being ready to fire um, all that is a lot more in depth than pulling back your bolt resetting the trigger resetting the hammer chambering your round and go so there's a lot more involved and typically with any sort of mechanical anything the more complicated it is the less reliable it is so you've got a lot more that can go wrong with a precision gas gun over a precision bolt action rifle now, that doesn't mean that bolt action rifles don't have their problems and don't break down from time to time and don't and don't fall apart because they absolutely do but you're not going to have anywhere near the issues um, getting a bolt action rifle ready to shoot and like putting a gas gun together and, and having it ready to shoot a lot of times takes a lot of trial and error and tinkering with uh, gas systems and your buffer buffer springs and, and all that stuff to get everything tuned where every little cycle and then if you change your load sometimes the the new load that you're shooting won't cycle there's there's a lot to go wrong a lot to tinker with and really fine tune with a gas gun whereas a bolt action is just a very simple mechanism so in that aspect in, in simplicity the bolt action definitely wins in a gas gun you're also going to have much faster follow-up shots so a big part of long-range precision shooting is wind reading you there's there's the old adage one shot one kill and you know that you see I think it's the military's uh, military sniper saying you know one shot one kill well a lot of times in long-range precision shooting it's one shot and a good follow-up so you'll see where that first shot lands make your adjustment and make a much more precise shot onto target with your second shot well with a gas gun there is no cut racking the bolt and chambering around it's ready to go as soon as you watch that bullet splash you can make your adjustment very fast and put that next round on target giving less time for the wind to change in between shots and all around less time for all the overall conditions to change which is going to 
depending on how far you're shooting and the the dis the conditions over that amount of distance that you're shooting, um, giving less time for all of that stuff to change, giving you a much more higher much higher chance of putting that follow up shot on target um, with a faster follow up shot than you are having to go through the process of cha racking your bolt, chambering a new round, getting back on target, and all that. So another place where the precision gas gun has a advantage over the bolt action is gunsmithing. So with a precision bolt action or precision bolt action, you're going to it's, there's a lot more that needs to be done by a competent gunsmith over a precision gas gun. And when I say precision gas precision gas gun, I'm typically talking about an AR platform, whether it be an AR-10 or an AR-15 platform chambered in a precision rifle caliber. Um, I'm per particularly talking about an AR-15 because 90% of the time when you think of a precision gas gun, you're talking about an AR platform. So just know that's what I'm talking about. And as modular as an AR, an AR platform is, it is so much easier to smith on a AR platform over a bolt action. Now if I wanted to change barrel and cheaper on top of that. So if I want to do a barrel swap on this, now this is set up with a rimage system. I've got a barrel nut. I can take my barrel nut off, swap barrels, headspace it, and be off to the races. But that is still going to take a lot more work than it is to swap barrels in an AR platform. So, you know, the AR platform, I can loosen up a couple of screws, take my handguard off, loosen up my barrel nut, and I've got my barrel off in my hands. Whereas this, I have to pull it out of the chassis, um, and setting headspace on this is a lot, there's a lot more involved in that. And if you don't have it set up with like a rimage system or something like that in a, on your precision gas gun, then you have to have a shoulder barrel from a gunsmith. And that is something, unless you own a lathe and really know how to work that lathe, you're not going to do at home. So you definitely are able to smith a lot more cost effectively as well as, speaking of cost effective, the barrel, to replace a barrel on this precision Tika here, um, you're looking at four to $500 for a new barrel, for a barrel swap. Depending on what kind of, what you want, what brand, you can get a high quality precision barrel for a gas gun, like like a precision 224 Valkyrie or 6.5 Grendel barrel for much cheaper, $250, $300 for a really top end barrel for a precision gas gun as well as all the other modularity. You can change the grips to, to suit exactly how you want. Um, the stock, there's a lot of different stock options. As a matter of fact, this is the Luth AR stock that I'm running on this bolt action rifle. And this is actually designed around an AR-15. It runs off of an AR-15 buffer tube. So there's a lot more modularity and ease of gunsmithing on an AR-15 platform over a bolt action rifle. So those are just some of the things, this is a video I've been thinking about for a while, those are just some of the things that uh, you, you may want to weigh and think about when you're thinking about getting into a precision gas, or precision gas gun or precision bolt action rifle. If you want to shoot long range, um, there's a lot of different things to think about and a lot of different ways to get into it. And depending on the money you want to spend, the accuracy that you want, and your uses for that rifle, um, you may want to pick one or the other. So, hope this is informative. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.